Dear ladies and gentlemen, fellow conservatives, Minisama Konnichiwa. Vast oceans may separate my homeland, Hungary, from this beautiful island of the rising sun, but there are two things, two things we most certainly share. Our passion for fighting communists and communism, and also our dry, sarcastic sense of humor. And uh, if you'll indulge me, I will demonstrate it with a quite typical Hungarian tale. The old lady asks her husband after many decades, do you still love me, dear? To which the old man grumbles, this issue came up at the wedding, wedding and I said yes. If that should change, I will inform you. Unfortunately, like the elderly gentleman with his wife, sometimes we neglect the love we feel for our country and feel little need to express it. We take it for granted, something we need not cultivate. But just like in marriage, that is a mistake. It's especially in difficult times that we need to care for the ones we love, even when we have grown accustomed to them being part of our everyday lives. And indeed, we live in perilous times menaced by the imperial logic of conquest. On the lands of our neighbor, Hungarian neighbor, the Ukraine, we hear Russian tanks grinding on their tracks. And the siren voices of the progressive left, on the other hand, want to rob us, not only of the honor of the nation, of the love of the place, but also of the very meaning of the family. It is precisely at times like these that we must rediscover our patriotic love, draw strengths from our histories, articulate our national interest, and protect the future of our children. And despite the enormous geographical distance between our countries, between Hungary and Japan, we are bound together, not only by uncanny similarities, like Hungary is the only one Western nation, Western country, using family name before the given name, or a legend of kinship, or more than uh, 100, 150 years of formal diplomatic relations between our countries, but also by the love of our homelands, of our past, and our families. And you know, Hungarians, as well as Japanese people, are a people tempered by the fires of history, strong like Tamahagen steel. We Hungarians came to Europe from Asia over a millennium ago, and our entire history was all about defending our country and our culture against the German, the Mongol, the Islamic, or the Russian Soviet conquest. For us, oppression has always taken an international form, but liberation and freedom have always been national in nature. And indeed, many times in our history, we have confessed love to our nation. We couldn't have endured otherwise. But the battlefield is not all suffering. It has its romance, and, is, and it is a most venerable and efficient teacher, or as you say here in Japan, sensei. In the furnace of our past, we became wise to the constant need to fight for our freedom. We developed a, a survival instinct, a stubborn defiance that has become a distinctive attribute of our Hungarian national character that we hold on to our homeland our language and our traditions before everything else. It is some kind of a special form of, of Hungarian smart power, like the Ruby Cube is a special form of Hungarian creativity. And through this history, through the Hungarian history, one can easily understand why we Hungarians approach major international conflicts with caution and why we maintain a strategic patience. One way uh, that Japan and Hungary differ, and to, to your advantage, to tell the truth, is that we are a landlocked country in the middle of Europe. And the landlocked nation of barely 15 million people 
must necessarily set one priority aim for survival, not to be subjected or absorbed, neither by one empire nor the other, neither by hard nor by soft power. This goal must be brought into line, of course, with the ruthless power relations of the geopolitical terrain. And there is only one way to achieve this, the way of peace and security, not belligerent military aggression, nor a policy of sanctions that threatens energy security. Because neither of those conform to the pivotal Hungarian interest, protecting the family and making sure that the next generation may be brought up in peace, dignity, and prosperity. And neither of those will help me raise my two children in peace and security, together with my wife, who are waiting for me at home in Budapest. But like protecting our country and our culture, safeguarding our families is also a matter of national security. As Hungary's constitution affirms, the family is the basis of the survival of the nation. And um, if all forms of cohabitation are referred to as family in order to conform some type of a neo-Marxist vogue LGBTQA plus nonsense, in practice, the true institution of family dissolves into nothingness, loses its original meaning. And if there is no family, there is no nation. God, homeland, and family. And please take into consideration that first, the postmodern left went after our religions and our national past, and now it has set its sights on the bedrock of our civilization, the family, because they want to tear down the societies they took centuries to build. And in the same vein, demography is also a matter of national strategy. Without children, there is no future, no future for a nation either. That is why for us, to Hungarian conservatives, the family is not an imposition of society, but an imperative of creation. We regard the child as a blessing and not the eco-warrior's carbon footprint. And yes, Hungary too grapples with demographic problems, but evidently there are solutions. Through an active family support scheme and the creation of a family-friendly cultural climate, we have managed to increase the total fertility rate by a third the number of marriages twofold, and reduce the number of abortions by more than a half over the last decade. And after all, the essence and purpose of life is continuity, which is what turns mere existence into a, into a human life worth living, and the way to achieving continuity for a humanity that lacks immortality runs through the family and the child the only option available to us. Ladies and gentlemen, there is little need for us conservatives to oppose any ideology. Let us leave that sort of thing to the socialists and to the progressives. We must champion common sense, our faith, our nation, our past, and our historical heroes. We must guard our families and our children so that there is someone to carry on the traditions that we have learned from our parents and grandparents. It is from them, for instance, that we learned in my country that the strength of a community and the dignity of every human being is rooted in work. That is precisely why we have the Hungarian so-called work fair society as a goal, with low taxes and with nearly full employment. But it is also from them, from our parents and grandparents, that we learned that life is more than a struggle for self-preservation. And what more makes it more is precise, precisely what makes it truly beautiful and meaningful to us. Our families, our children, our dignity, our freedom, uh, freedom our faith, and our country. This is why conservatives must unite all around the world. Time has come for the revolution of normality. This is what awake, not woke means. 
This is the meaning of CPAC. United we stand, divided we fall. See you at CPAC Hungary next year. Thank you, CPAC. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much. Please, I give him a big round of applause once again.